Well, Ryan, uh, first development camp in the organization. How are you feeling uh, just taking in the atmosphere here in Edmonton as a, as a member of the Edmonton Oilers? Yeah, it's been a little bit surreal. Um, everything that's kind of happened in, in my case has been you know, pretty quick the last few months. So it's been cool to get to Edmonton just as it is and then to be in this f facility like this and um, you know, get to meet the staff, meet some of the other players has been um, you know, really cool and I'm looking forward to the rest of the week. How would you kind of summarize the first few days of a development camp here? Oh, they've been good. A lot of information has been passed along. Obviously, you know, you're a little bit tired too, you know, working hard on, on and off the ice, doing some testing and things like that. Um, but it's been really, really good. Like I said, it's been eye-opening. You know, I've had a few different cool presentations, talked to some, you know, alumni and lots of the management, and um, it's been very informative. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your decision to, you know, leave leave college and sign as a, a free agent with the Oilers? Yeah, I, I played uh, three years at UMD, and, um, you know, I was really, really fortunate for my time there. Um, you know, I'm going to miss it a lot for sure. Uh, but I think, you know, I got I had a really, really successful um, last two seasons where I think I progressed, um, you know, on the ice and, and off the ice a little bit mentally. And I think, uh, you know, this opportunity presented itself that was a little bit too, uh, too good to pass up. And I think it was the right time um, for me to kind of take that next step and, you know, pursue, pursue this dream. You had those two shutouts too in the NCHC tournament. You know, was that a big sort of highlight for your career so far? Are you looking to kind of build on that? heading into here? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know how UMD, we're, we're really, uh, you know, a really, really good college team the last few years. And, you know, our uh, our goal is always that national championship. But to win a conference championship like that is something that, you know, you should never take lightly. So um, definitely something that I'm super proud of and was super happy to, you know, have that experience with, with my teammates and staff. And, you know, to be, to be able to, you know, add on to the tradition there and bring some hardware back to Duluth was something super special and something that I'll always remember. You had that, that one game with the Condors as well somewhere, that, a place that it looks like you're going to play next year. What do you, what do you make of the atmosphere in Bakersfield, the team, and you know, looking forward, how do you feel about the f your future there? To start? Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, you know, Edmonton and California, maybe a little bit polar opposites. So, um, but like I said, I kind of got that week and a week and a bit there um, to kind of get acclimated to um, Bakersfield itself, a little bit of the travel, um, you know, the staff there, um, some of the players there. So that was really, really informative as well and, and good. Where I got to be there for a couple games and just watch, and then um, got to play, got to play on the road. Um, and get that experience too. So that was super, super exciting and something that I'm looking forward to, you know, coming up here next season. You got the pads already too. It looks like you think it looks pretty good in, in blue and orange with those pads, yeah? Yeah, no, I'm excited. I, uh, I'm not sure if, if anyone's seen it, but I had to wear my college gear for my Bakersfield game. And um, maroon and gold don't really go too well with orange and blue. So um, it was nice. I got that stuff kind of, you know, a little bit ago, a little bit ago in the summer here and been able to kind of work it in a little bit before camp. So it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a little bit of a, of a feeling where it's like Christmas for a goalie in summer. So, um, you know, it's been nice to work that stuff in. And then maybe for, you know, a lot of people that don't know your game as well, just maybe describe yourself a little bit as a goalie. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say something whenever I get this question is, I wouldn't say I'm too fancy in too many different places or, um, you know, I don't think I have like a big weakness or a strength. I think it's something um, where I'm kind of a all around goalie. I think, you know, lots of my strength is maybe between my ears with, with my head. I think that's something mentally that you have to be really strong about and um, reading plays and whatever it is. But uh, yeah, I think it's just something, you know, as a goalie where, you know, I try and improve, you know, two to three percent in each area of the game, um, you know, season to season, off season, in season, whatever it is. So I think that's something that uh, a way that I would describe myself. Uh, your performance between last year and the year before it was uh, almost, not, I'm not going to say night and day, but it was a very big improvement. Uh, what changed for you between the last year that maybe helped you have the performance that you did? Yeah, I think like any goalie, once you, you know, you start playing with some confidence, it kind of keeps, um, keeps rolling. Um, uh, two years ago, I, I shared the net a little bit with one of my goalie partners at, at Duluth. And then um, this past year, sad to say, he, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer at the start of the season. So he was out for, for the indefinite future. And, you know, I kind of had a little bit of, uh, you know, peace of mind in my head that, you know, not peace of mind because I was confident regardless. But, you know, I knew it was going to be my net. And it um, didn't matter if I let in 12 goals on the first night. And, you know, I'd be able to play the next night. So I think that was something that allowed me to kind of grow mentally and um, kind of get on a roll and whatever it is earlier on in the season. And then, um, you know, we were having having some su success collectively as a team don't get me wrong I was playing in such a in front of such a good uh, or behind such a good group of group of guys and you know a system that was coached by such a great coach and Scott Sandlin that you know it kind of made it easy easy on me to kind of you know continue that down the stretch uh, do you think being able to play free and easy without uh, maybe that back that pressure behind you helps you a goaltender 
Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, if anyone doesn't say it helps them, I think they're lying to a certain extent. I think you need to be, like I said, tough between the years. And, you know, if you don't get that start the next night, you need to just wash it. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's your team. It's your teammate who's in the net at that night, too. You need to support everyone. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you get that win, that's all that matters, right? So I think it's, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, if you have, you have that little bit of, um, you know, peace of mind in the back of your head that, you know, you can play that next night and, you know, you're a little bit warm already or you're already seeing pucks a little bit easier, I think it does help. Do you think that playing against uh, some college J kids, guys that were already 23, maybe 24 even, has helped prepare you for development camp? You're playing against guys whose maybe shots are a little bit harder or guys who are a little bit more developed or played against men. Has that helped you coming into today's camp? Yeah, for sure. I mean, college has been, college has been a league that's, you know, um, it's been it's been growing and developing so much in the past few years, and I think it accounts for something like a third of the whole NHL, um, which is pretty pretty crazy. So um, it's definitely good hockey with whoever you play. And um, I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to play in a conference called the NCHC, which is probably the, the strongest conference in college hockey. So night in and night out, you're playing a top 20 team um, in the nation, which is um, I think you know it's 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 important in, in terms of like you said, translating to to camps like these where you know every single player can shoot the puck, every single player can make moves. So um, I think it's been something that's helped me along. And then lastly, what do you kind of just do away from the rink? What are your like your hobbies? What do you like to do to like get your mind off of hockey? Yeah, in the summer, I mean, I think like any other hockey player, I like to go awful lot in the summer. Um, kind of get, you know, it's, it's fun to be at the rink in the summer too and, you know, be in the off season, but at the same time, it's fun to get away. Um, you know, get to the lake, get to the, the, the cabin, the cottage, whatever you want to call it. Um, in the winter, though, I feel like hockey is just hockey. I mean, I feel like, especially, you know, I'm from a town called Thunder Bay or played in Duluth where it's a lot like winters here in Edmonton where, you know, there's not too, too much to do outside or when you're not at the rink. So, um, you know, life can be a little bit boring in the winter, but that's also good at the same time. It keeps you focused.